a seminary trained modern day John the Baptist. Minister Damon Thompson stands up for some unpopular but biblical truths. One of the hardest things to admit is it's not about being a one man show in the church. The key word is synergy here today on this episode of The Revolution. Welcome to The Revolution, a show with killer music and razor sharp truth. I'm George. And I'm Kat. Recently, a friend of mine dove into some really hard facts comparing the church thousands of years ago that Jesus intended the Great Commission and what it is today. We are worlds apart from the way it was intended to be. We've got some really deep stuff, deep discussion today from Minister Damon Thompson and his spiritual son, the lead singer from For Today, Maddie Montgomery, in just a moment. That guy survived the church. His story in just a moment. Self-reliance versus submission. What would happen if today's church leaders would hand over and just ask for forgiveness and start pouring in to their sons and daughters and releasing them out? After all, it's hard to release control to a generation that goes to rock shows and has piercings and tattoos. Can we be trusted to evangelize properly? Michael, if you remember the story in the New Testament where Jesus is coming in in the triumphant entry, he goes and he finds a colt that a man has never ridden. He sends the apostles to the colt that a man's never been on, and the Bible said they take their garments and they lay it on the colt. There's an unbroken generation that is waiting to be mantled by apostles. And if that generation can receive the mantle of the apostles, it can ultimately become the transportation for the Christ. For the colt to become the transportation of the Christ, it had to accept the mantles of the apostles. And even if you're unbroken, even if you're wild, even if you're out of the box, even if other churches didn't want you, even if you're an outcast of the religious system, even if like Maddie, they don't understand your music and they don't understand where you're coming from and they don't know what your slant is, if you'll receive the mantle of the apostles, you will become the transportation of the Christ. And a lot of people that think they're qualified to get Jesus from where he is to where he's ultimately supposed to be, the king of the known universe where his glory covers the earth as the waters cover the sea, it's going to be an unbroken, untrained generation that does not fit in the box and God's going to put an apostolic mantle on them and they're going to transport Christ to where He needs to be. So we've got to be willing to look and say, look, you may look like an untrained, you may look like a, you're uncouth, you may look like you don't fit into the box smart religion, but if I'm willing to take what God's put on me and put it on you, you're going to take Jesus to places that I could never take Jesus. Maddie Montgomery, for today, is taking Jesus to places that I could never take Jesus. So all I have to do is keep putting that apostolic mantle on this spiritual son. And it's going to keep giving him the courage that he needs to say, I'm going to take Jesus to a place that people have never believed that he should be able to go through. I'm the vocalist for a band called Four Today. We're a, a metal, hardcore band. We um, we do primarily secular tours. And, and in that, we're afforded the opportunity to preach to Satanists and atheists and drug addicts and and um, prostitutes and people who are possessed by demons where we're able to confront a, a subculture that is by and large ignored by the church and uh, we've seen even in in the three and a half four years that we've been doing this such a tremendous turning of church people that were just ignorant to this culture to to see that there is an untouched uh, uh, there, there's an untouched people group here in the United States and I feel like for so long we'd wanted to, to send people out to Zimbabwe and Malawi and China and and, and Brazil and whatever but uh, we've forgotten about the fact that there are kids dying in our malls. There are kids going to hell, killing themselves, dying and, and, and going to hell forever and ever because no one ever preached the gospel to them. No one ever bothered to show them the real love, the, the, the tenacious virtue and righteousness, the, the offensive message of the gospel of Jesus Christ in, in the mall, in their city, because we were so concerned with everything else, with building our churches, with evangelism, with, with outreach, that we forgot that there are people in our city that don't care about our church. There are people in our city that don't care about whether we're, we're, we're Presbyterian or Lutheran or Baptist or Catholic or, or whatever. There are people that, that genuinely don't care about religion, that if they were confronted with the reality of the man, Jesus Christ would, would give everything they have to follow him. Mm. 
And those are the people we go after. People that are fed up with religion, that have seen it on TV one too many times, and heard it on the radio one too many times, that when they're confronted with the reality of their sin and their separation from God, and the reality that there's hope in Jesus Christ, uh, drop everything to follow Him. All right, guys, don't forget to check us out online, therevolutiontv.com. There you're going to find full episodes, a link to our Facebook. Reach out to us. You're not alone. TheRevolutionTV.com. We promise we'll get right back to every single one of your messages. Most of us have grown up in a home without a father figure. We have been called a fatherless generation. So that's why it is so hard for us to get a heavenly father relationship. We don't even know what that would look like, and it's hard for us to accept his love. But church family, it is so key, especially for the leadership, to step into that role, to put your arm around the younger generation, and to start sowing that love for them to open up their eyes to see what Christ's love really looks like, what a father's love really looks like. That is the key to synergy, from turning orphans into royal heirs. Revelation 5, baby. My father died when I was eight. And um, and then after that, my youth pastor told my mom that I had too many character flaws uh, to be worth his time. So he wanted to spend his time with the other kids in the youth group that would be uh, more of a, a fruitful investment of his time and energy as a minister. So I just kind of got pushed to the corner and, and forgotten about my whole life. And uh, I just... I had to have an encounter with God face to face on my own uh, on the, the steps of my college when I was 19 years old. I had an encounter with the living God. For the next month, I hitchhiked around the country, dropped everything, quit my job, moved out of my apartment, put all my worldly possessions in my car and parked it in a parking lot and just left and, uh, and, and went after God for a month. And every day I was in a, a situation where if he didn't show up, I was going to be lost. I didn't have money. I didn't have friends in these cities. I, I, I had literally no way of providing for myself, and I put myself in a position where, you know, I, I jumped off the cliff, so to speak. You know, I, I was in a place where if he didn't catch me, I was going to fall. I didn't have any other hope but God, and, and every single day he showed himself to me. And I feel like that was when I, 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 the first time that I was really able to view God as a father because he was really protecting me and he was really providing me, for me, and I could see it. And I feel like one of the, the biggest problems we have in the American church with the concept of a father God and really being willing to approach him like that and really being willing to submit to him like that is that we don't ever need anything from him. We don't ever allow ourselves to, to be in a position which if God doesn't show up, we're lost. Because we have we have our, our jobs and our 401ks and we have uh, appropriate investments and we're relying on the economy and, and we're voting on, on every election like like Barack Obama is the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know, there's this there's this pressure in the American church to rely on the system of the world instead of to rely on the God that promises to provide for us. And one of the verses that uh that I, I buried deep in my spirit right after my father died was Jeremiah 29:11. It says, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And that's something that I didn't get until I said, God, I don't, I don't have any plans for myself. I just need to see what you have for me. And he began to move me and he began to direct my path and he began to, to deal with sin issues in my life, addiction issues in my life, compromise and rebellion issues in my life. And from that place, then uh, I was able to learn to trust him. Because I was obedient to say, God, I know I need to stop sleeping around. And I know I need to, to, to stop getting drunk. I know I need to stop messing around with drugs. I, I know that this is what you've called me away from, and I see that it's good. And now that I've said yes to that, you can say, you know, I, I have this, this place of authority for you in this band, and I'm going to send you out to preach the gospel to, to hundreds of thousands of people all around the world. Um, you know, and that wasn't something that I could ever have been trusted with before, but but I said yes to God calling me to consecration, to God calling me to discipline, to God calling me to submission. And um, and because of that, I learned that he's good. And I feel like that's something that the church misses out on because we don't say uh, we don't say yes to him calling us to a place of dependency. And because of that, by extension, I feel like we're disqualified from ever hearing God call us to submit to spiritual fathers. And that was something I, I remember years ago when we first started uh, in this band, uh, I met a kid that was in um, Bible college, and he told us that we needed to submit to a pastor. And I said, you're crazy. We're all pastors in the kingdom, right? We're, we're all leaders in the kingdom. We're all fathers in the kingdom. We're all equal, right? And, um, and man, and it wasn't, nobody ever came and beat me over the head and said, no, that's wrong. Uh, but I just, I was able to see, like, like Damon was talking about, the, the mantle that is on him, that there's something on his life that I don't have on my life. 
Um, and there's something on, on, on the way that he ministers. There's something on the, the dreams he has for this generation and the way he intends to spend his time here on earth that I don't have yet. The way that he sees things is different than the way that I see things. And so if for no other reason, then I believe that things will perpetually increase for the sake of the kingdom. It was prophesied about Jesus in Isaiah 9 that... Uh, that there would be no end to the increase of his government and his peace. And so as a son, my in, in, intention in coming after Damon is to increase what he's doing, that I'm going to be more effective than what he's doing, and I'm going to raise up sons that will be more effective than what I'm doing. And, and Jesus will get his inheritance, and these prophecies will be fulfilled by our faithfulness right now. Um, and so, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily something that anybody ever came and taught me, uh, but it was something that started with me saying, God, I choose to be dependent on you. I choose to say yes to you calling me to a lifestyle of consecration and holiness and righteousness and daily discipline. And and from that place, God was able to, to direct me and put me in a place of saying, I need you to submit to this man because you're going to be more effective for it in the long run. Father, I just declare that this generation is going to step into the greatest blessing of a father of any generation. God, we're not asking you just to raise up a generation that's powerful and raise up a generation that's authentic and raise up a generation that's significant. We're asking you to raise up a generation that is submitted. God, raise up sons and daughters that will yield, that will bend their necks, that will give up their stiff-necked, self-involved ideologies, and they will turn their hearts to fathers. And God, I pray that you would raise up fathers that burn not for self, but burn for next, that burn for that next generation. God, give signs and wonders. Give miracle declaration in the earth. That we would come not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but demonstration of the Holy Spirit and with power. God, raise up trumpeting revivalists that will release the spirit of the third great awakening into the earth that is going to bring about such a transformation that we will declare in accordance with your word, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. God, do something historic. Let this be the day of awakening that changes the state of the nations of the earth. God, raise up revivalists. Take them that are walking in dark paths. Take them that are walking down dark roads and infuse them with the glory of awakening. Let the spirit of your breaker come and begin to snap chains of bondage. Let fathers begin to carry breaking anointings. Let sons begin to carry breaking anointings. And let the synergy of those anointings create something historic to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, we just believe that there is there is intent to what you're doing right now, Father. And in, in, in this season, in these generations, God, I just believe that that even as the enemy has tried desperately to crush the family structure in our nation, God, as as, as more than half of the, the sons growing up right now are doing so without a father, I just believe, Father, that, that 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 has put us in position for you to get the glory for the structure you're about to bring. For you to get the glory for spiritual fathers turning their hearts to sons, God. I just believe in the name of Jesus that, that what you're about to do is only going to be able to be attributed to you, Father. Even the that what you're doing right now and bringing healing to sons and bringing restoration to sons and bringing a place of, of right relationship and right submission to sons, God, will only be able to be attributed to you, Father. That it will only be your glory. That it will, that it will only be your name being praised yes, for this, Father. That it will not be yes, a good God. family. It will not be a, a wise yes, Father living in the house. But, yes, God. but God, that it will be you, you and only uh, you, Jesus. Come on. Jesus, we just, uh, we just I plead your blood over my generation. Yes, I plead your blood over my generation. I just I just declare forgiven sins right now, Father. Uh, for anyone watching this in the name of Jesus, I declare that your sins are forgiven and you're given right standing with the God uh, yes. of the universe right now. That you can approach Him with boldness and confidence. That you can get in His face as a Father. That you can that you can receive healing from that place. That you can receive restoration in that place. That there's a new life for you in that place. Go. I just. Uh, mm. God, I, I, specifically, I just declare, Father, that, that the zeal of my generation would be directed by the wisdom of our Father's generation. Yes. That, it would be, that, that it would be met with a vision of the, the apostolic leadership that you've put in our Father's generation, God. That, that people that have rejected religion, people that have rejected the cookie-cutter, dry, cold, lifeless church playing that we've been doing for years, that they, would, that they would offer wisdom to our generation for how to avoid that. God, I ask that the same pitfalls that, that our, our Father's generation 
have fallen into, God, that, 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 we would, that we would jump over those, Father, that we would leap past those, God, with our eyes set on the goal, that we would not fall into to playing church, that we would not fall into evangelizing Christians, that we would not fall into to, to, to making more money, to gaining fame and prestige and honor, God, that we would not, that we would not fall into growing our bank account, but that we would burn to see your, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. We see it coming. We see it coming. Yes. We celebrate it, yes. God. We celebrate it, God. We see it coming, God. Yes, God. We see it coming, God. We say, we say, bring your glory on yes, the foundation Lord. of order that we build, God. As we're faithful to follow your order, as we're faithful to submit to your laws, God, to, uh-huh. to develop ourselves in the place of secret consecration, in the place of secret devotion, we just ask that you would put such a glory on us that people would no longer have to reconcile themselves with church or with Christians or with religion, but that they would have to reconcile themselves yes. with Almighty Yahweh, yes. God, face to face, face to face, face to face. That is the glory you're bringing yes. to our generation, God, as we build the structure, the foundation of consecration, discipline, submission, and perseverance. So we just declare these things, Father, over my generation in the name of Jesus. Let it be done. Amen and amen. And we just want to forgive those church leaders and even those in our family who may have dropped the ball in relationship. And Heavenly Father can pick that right back up. That's right. You know, and that's the key. It's all about relationships. You know, God, He gave us the gift of love. A lot of people don't realize there's a lot of gifts of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Bible talks about gifts of prophecy, of speaking in tongues, of knowledge, of wisdom. But He says that all that is just foolishness if you don't have love. And I do believe that God is starting to restore a greater sense of godly love, even among the church and its leaders. For many years, we've seen leadership that's been running the church more like a a Fortune 500 company rather than a family. And I really feel like God's starting to bring it back to that family feel. You love your family. You'll do anything for them. That doesn't mean you always agree with their actions, but you're going to love them. It's the same way. We are one body. That doesn't mean we approve of everything that our family does, but we're going to start loving on them despite that fact. You know, the Bible says that it's His goodness that leads us to repentance. We have to repent. That's one way. We acknowledge that we've fallen short, but we turn around and God embraces us right away. And it's His goodness that's allowing us to run to Him, to make us want to repent. We need to key in on that. Let's key in on forgiveness. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven, the Bible says. If you judge others, you're going to be judged, is what the Bible says. Instead, we're seeing far too often where we're first to judge, first to get angry, first not to forgive. We're counteractive. We're not going the way the Bible's telling us to do. We're preaching one thing, but we're acting in a different way. We need to focus on God's love, and all that will fall into play. It's a family. It's not a Fortune 500 company. Okay? If you don't have a relationship with God, maybe you've gotten burnt with the church and you say, hey, I don't want a part of that. I'm telling you, it's not about religion. It's about having a relationship with God. And it starts by knowing Jesus. I challenge you to go seek what a real relationship with Jesus is all about. Reach out to us, therevolutiontv.com. We will reach right back. Thank you, God. This has been a good one today. We love you guys. And if God is for you, who can be against you? 